Madam President, Excellencies, the war in Ukraine is one of the greatest challenges ever to the international order and the global peace architecture founded on the United Nations Charter because of its nature, intensity, and consequences. We are dealing with the full-fledged invasion on several fronts of one member state of the United Nations, Ukraine, by another, the Russian Federation, a permanent member of the Security Council, in violation of the United Nations Charter, and with several aims, including redrawing the international recognized borders between the two countries. The war has led to senseless loss of life, massive devastation in urban centers, and the destruction of civilian infrastructure. I will never forget the horrifying images of civilians killed in Butcher, and I immediately called for an independent investigation to guarantee effective accountability. And I'm also deeply shocked by the personal testimony of rapes and sexual violence that now are emerging. The High Commissioner for Human Rights has spoken of possible war crimes, grave breaches of international humanitarian law, and serious violations of international human rights law. And the Russian offensive has also led to the displacement of more than 10 million people in just one month, the fastest forced population movement since the Second World War. Far beyond Ukraine's borders, the war has led to massive increases in, its pri in prices of food, energy, and fertilizers, because Russia and Ukraine are linchpins of these markets. It has disrupted supply chains and increased the cost of transportation, putting even more pressure on the developing world. Many developing countries are already on the verge of debt collapse due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the lack of adequate liquidity and debt relief, stemming ultimately from the unfair nature of our global economic and financial system. For all these reasons, it is more urgent by the day to silence the guns. That is why I ask the Emergency Relief Coordinator, Martin Griffiths, to travel to Russia and Ukraine to press for an urgent humanitarian ceasefire. And the Secretary General Griffiths will update you on the humanitarian situation and the results of his contacts so far. And the Secretary General Di Carlo will also brief you on the political and human rights dimensions. But as Secretary General of the United Nations, it is my duty to call the attention of the Council to the serious damage being done to the global economy and particularly to vulnerable people and developing countries. Madam President, our analysis indicates that 74 developing countries with a total population of 1.2 billion people are particularly vulnerable to spiking food, energy, and fertilizer costs. Debt obligations take up some 16% of developing countries' export earnings and in small island developing states, the figure is 34% and rising because of increased interest rates and the need to pay for expensive imports. In the past months alone, wheat prices have increased by 22%, maize by 21%, and barley by 31%. Brent oil prices on the 1st of April were more than 60% higher than at the same time last year. A series of events have led to that, not only the present situation. Natural gas and fertilizer prices more than double over the same period. We are already seeing some countries move from vulnerability into crisis and signs of serious social unrest. The flames of conflict are fueled by inequality, deprivation, and underfunding. With all the warning signals flashing red, we have a duty to act. Madam President, the Global Crisis Response Group on Food, Energy and Finance that I set up last month has formulated some initial recommendations for the consideration of member states, international financial institutions and others. On food, we are urging all countries to keep markets open, resist unjustified and unnecessary export restrictions and make reserves available to countries at risk of hunger and famine. This is not a time for protectionism. Humanitarian appeals must be fully funded. People cop up in crises around the world cannot pay the price for this war. Our, on energy, the use of strategic stockpiles and additional reserves could help ease this energy crisis in the short term. But the only medium and long-term solution is to accelerate the deployment of renewable energy, which is not impacted by market fluctuations. 
These will allow the progressive phase-out of coal and other fossil fuels, and renewables are already cheaper in most of the cases. And on finance, international financial institutions must go into emergency mode. We need urgent action by the G20 and international financial institutions to increase liquidity and fiscal space so that governments can provide safety nets for the poorest and most vulnerable. The reform I've been calling for the global financial system is long overdue. All these actions are closely linked with the prevention agenda and with building and sustaining peace. Madam President, the war in Ukraine must stop now. We need serious negotiations for peace based on the principles of the United Nations Charter. This Council is charged with maintaining peace and doing so in solidarity. I deeply regret the divisions that have prevented the Security Council from acting not only on Ukraine, but on other threats to peace and security around the world. I urge the Council to do everything in its power to end the war and to mitigate its impact, both on the suffering people of Ukraine and on vulnerable people and developing countries around the world, and I thank you.